So we're going to look at the setup project option within the Kobe extension tool. Now this has a real big revamp. So we're going to set up project. And it has the same settings, much like the other ones we've looked at. But what they've done is they've put them in different places. So the first thing we're going to do is to choose the locality. Um, and that's going to be the UK. And you've got the option to choose the relevant element ID for the identification or the global unique identifier, which is the GUID. And for the units, we're going to choose the standard units with the project themselves. So it's going to use the, whatever the project units are, they will be the ones that it uses for the um, reporting of any coordinates. So we go to the next option, which is just on the uh, list of tabs, which are spaces. And the rule of thumb with this is for all object types, and it detects them that they're what's in the uh, file, um, that we use architectural objects are in rooms and building service objects are in spaces. And then we can add some extra fields in here. So we've got the space name builder separator with a underscore, and we can add an extra field. And from that field list, all the things that are available to us. So let's say we're going to have level in there as well for our spaces. Then we go on to the next tab, and that is the type. So we've got all the types in there. Most importantly, we could have another field in this one. And we'll say for that one, we are going to just have the custom option that we can choose one for ourselves. I'm actually going to use the type description. And then from a sorting point of view, this is where when we've added the uniclass codes, we can then sort by those uniclass codes. So in the list, we go down and find uniclass, and then product first, and then function second. And we'll have the third one as keynote. Now we go to the components themselves. So each component, as you know, has a mark. But what we can also add in here, extra field for, and let's have a look. And we might have the family as well. And you can add as many as you like in the, of these fields, and they will then appear in the Kobe schedules when you generate them. So for the systems themselves, the only thing I'll have, I've got system classification in there, and then category is going to leave blank, but I could put some options in there as well. I'm going to say, yep, use the uniclass option as well, because we've added that in earlier. Then attributes, so you can either say select none, select all, or you can add and can pick the ones you want. I'm going to say select all the attributes for all the object types. And what it's done, it's picked up lots of object types. It won't add attributes to objects that aren't there. So it's only the objects that are there that it will pick out. Then coordinates. So the default, I tend to always use this bounding box perimeter. You can have the location point as well. or also. And then what schedules do we want to produce? Well, we don't want doors or windows. We want a multi-category one. We don't want electrical circuits or switch systems. We don't need rooms because we are building services, so it's going to be spaces. Um, and then the final one is the mapping. So some of the times what you can do with this is to choose an option. And rather than it replicate it, in other words, Revit will create one, and then the Kobe extension creates one, you can choose the Revit one to map to the Kobe extension, and that saves you having to fill the two things in twice. And the one I've chosen down the bottom here was description. So it's in the list, description there, and we've changed it instead of Kobe component description, we're just choosing description from the list. And they are by the type, so you've got them by component type, and then you've got them by what the facility options are, and then you've got the floors, and then the spaces, and then the types as well. Okay, so all of the available fields are there for you to map if you've 
added the information to a Revit one, but you then want it to be filled in automatically by the into the Kobe spreadsheet. Okay, we're happy with all that, so let's save and close. And we say okay. And it generates a number of spreadsheets. If we go to the project browser, we can see which ones it's uh, created. We expand the schedules list. So we've got the floor, we've got spaces, systems, duct and piping, and then the type. Okay, But they don't have anything in them because what we need to do is go through the second part of it, which is the manage side of it, where it then it will populate them. So that concludes the setup. So we can then move on now to the manage side. Thank you.